Hello, I'm John Davis with the organization KDGO, which develops and implements evidence-based clinical practice guidelines on a global basis having to do with kidney disease. We're here today with Dr. Hong Zhang, who is the director of the renal division at Peking University First Hospital in China. We are here to discuss the topic of IgA nephropathy, which is particularly relevant to us right now since we are in the process of updating our guideline on IGAN. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let me ask you, what is the burden of disease regarding this IgA nephropathy in the Asia Pacific region? So as, a, as we well know, ID nephropathy is the most common primary glomerular disease in the world. However, the true disease prevalence for ID nephropathy is difficult to ascertain since there is a high degree of variability in screening for the asymptomatic cases. So the prevalence of ID nephropathy differs across populations and uh, geography space. Nevertheless, prevalence of ID nephropathy appears to be highest in East Asia. It has been reported that ID nephropathy is present in up to 54% of primary glomerular nephritis in China making it uh, one of the most major causes of chronic kidney disease in younger adults. And how do these patients present when they come to the clinic in the Asia Pacific region? So ID nephropathy presents uh, with highly heterogeneous in clinic and the pathological features. Most severe clinical presentations and a higher risk of disease progression have been reported in Asians than Europeans. Moreover, active lesions such as the endocapillary hypocellularity and the crescents are more commonly reported in Asians than Europeans. The response to treatment such as the therapy of the corticosteroids Immunosuppressant is rarely uh, reported, with great apparent efficacy reported in Asia than European studies. The mechanism responsible for the presentation and the development of ID nephropathy are not completely uh, understood yet. What are some of the changes in the risk predictions and latest treatment targets? in the new KDGO guideline? A key update is that the definition of patient with ID nephropathy at risk for progressive loss of kidney function is a protein urea greater than 0.5 gram per day on or off treatment. The goal of treatment is to reduce GFR loss to less than one milliliter per minute per year, with the goal to maintain protein urea less than 0.5 uh, gram per day, but preferably um, less than 0.3 gram per day for the rest of patient's life. These targets are more stringent than those proposed in 2021 guideline. Another key update is that the treatment strategy should simultaneously manage the risk of progression by reducing pathogenic forms of IgA or preventing IgA immunocomplex formation, which cause inflammation of the kidney, and it's effectively manage the risk of kidney function decline due to ID nephropathy induced uh, uh, nephron loss. These statements are mainly based on the current evidence from clinical trials in the last few years. Traditionally, IGAN treatments focused on steroids, immunosuppressants, RASI, optimal blood pressure and lipid control, and healthy diet and lifestyle. 
What are some new therapies that are now available? Recent studies have shown that both IGLT2 inhibitor and the new endothelial receptor antagonist may have benefits for treating ID nephropathy. Both classes of drugs are thought to have beneficial hemodynamic effects on kidney vasculature and to attenuate inflammation, fibrosis, and uh, proliferation. This strategy is used to reduce the risk of progression of kidney function decline due to ID nephropathy induced nephro loss. Another agent targeted released bortezomib in the distal ileum has also been recently approved for ID nephropathy treatment. This is the only treatment uh, that has been shown to reduce the levels of pathogenic forms of IDA and IDA immune complexes. Can you briefly summarize the four pathophysiologic steps underlining IGAN? Yes, that classically, we think about the multi-heats that are required for the development of ID nephropathy and its clinical features. The first step begins with the production of pathogenic forms of IDE1, commonly known as the galactose-deficient IDE1. The body then produces auto uh, antibody against this IDE1 in response. This leads to production of a circulating immune complex, which are deposited in the kidney, resulting in the activation of the complement system and the setting of local process of inflammation and the injury in the glomerular, which progressive uh, sclerosis and uh, fibrosis. In addition to the IDE1 immune complex, it has been hypothesis that IDA1 aggregates themselves could also be pathogenic and uh, con contribute to kidney injury as well. What are some of the advanced agents under clinical investigation and how do they target the pathophysiology of IGAN? Our improved understanding of the IDA nephropathy mechanism has allowed the development of drug therapy that targets the four heads or multi heads, understanding that underlying the disease process. Uh, the potential therapeutic targets based on the current understanding for the pathogenesis of IDA nephropathy, including the modulation of gut mucosa immunity, such as the targeted released bortezomib in the gut, regulation of IDA production by modulating the B cell or plasma cell activation, such as the inhibitors of BAF and O APRIO. It is believed these novel agents could limit the produ uh, production of the pathogenic IDE early in the disease process. We also have complement inhibitors that act on the later steps to mitigate the inflammatory and the fibrotic effect caused by the overactivation of the alternative and the lactin pathway. And finally, we have another class of uh, agents called endothelial receptor antagonists, which inhibit endothelial ETA receptor and uh, uh, supposedly uh, exert beneficial hemodynamic effects by protecting endothelial cell, mesangium, and tubular interstitium and the portocyte injury from uh, inflammation and the fibrosis. Clinicians now have an array of treatment options for IGAN to individualize for the patient. What, what practical advice can you give on how to optimally mix and match these therapies? 
One of the key takeaways from the recent clinical IgE nephropathy draft guideline is for patients with IgE nephropathy who are at risk for progressive kidney function decline, patients should receive therapies that target both IgA-specific drivers of nephro loss and the consequence of the nephro loss from IgE nephropathy. In the past, we knew how to treat generic uh, nephro loss well. We maintain the optimal blood pressure control and uh, minimize a protein urea and uh, cardiovascular risk by adopting healthy lifestyle, uh, all the using ROS blockage and uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor. With the availability of disease-modifying therapies, such as a targeted release bortezomib and the complement inhibitors, we can now prevent or reduce pathogenic IgA complex formation and reduce glomerular inflammation. In theory, these agents should complement the benefits driven from treatments used for general effect from nephron loss. Regarding the question on how to best mix and match, to be honest, we do not know yet. Since the trials have not test, tested the, the optimal sequence or the combination of therapies, we need to extend the application of novel agents based in a real-world clinical practice, and also need to design clinical studies uh, to prove the efficacy and the safety of each mix and match treatment strategy. What do you see as the treatment or knowledge gaps that still exist for IGAN? And also, what are the persistent unmet needs for patients with IGAN? IgE nephropathy is a heterogeneous disease with a complex underlying pathophysiology, and the current treatment options are not sufficient. However, the evolving understanding of pathogenic pathways of IgE nephropathy has led to the discovery and the development of new drugs for more targeted therapies. Emerging treatment approach for ID nephropathy is likely to evolve uh, that when novel therapies become available in the next few years. The discovery of better biomarkers and uh, comparative studies for new treatments may enable more process targeting treatment for ID nephropathy. One further question. Precision medicine in IGAN. Are we there yet? I think great uh, progress has been made in the treatment of IgE nephropathy such that we have evolved from treating effect of the nephro loss as a result of the disease to treating the underlying causes of the disease. Remarkable studies have been achieved across many glomerular disease, ID nephropathy included, that have allowed us to better categorize the disease mechanism, uh, mechanism and take aim at the multitude of molecular targets for maximal treatment effect. Despite this progress, much work it's still needed to identify additional validated biomarkers for ID nephropathy and the truths for predicting treatment response. If achieved, this will help us decide when to initiate the treatment, what treatment to use, in what combination or in order, and in whom. This will truly be keeping with the goals of the precision medicine. Thank you. This has been very interesting. Thank you for spending the time with us and for sharing your knowledge. And uh, KDGO really appreciates it. 
Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, and thank you for watching. Katie Goad's mission is to bring the advances in the latest science around the world to people who can use it in improving outcomes for patients. Thank you for watching.